The anime begins with a young student named Yusi Inaba. After Fanny seemed junior high, he was excited to start at Judo Business High School. He chose this school because it had a dormitory where he could live independently. Sadly, Yusi's parents died in an accident, so his uncle Yusa became his guardian. Not wanting to be a burden to Yusa, who didn't have much money, Yusi decided to take care of himself. But things went wrong when the dorm at Judo Business High School burned down, making it impossible for Yusi to live there. With only 30,000 yen, he couldn't afford any of the expensive apartments near to school. One day, while thinking about his problem in a park, Yusi bumped into a boy named Corey. Corey told Yusi about a special apartment agency run by a man named Mana, right there in the park. He said Yusi could get a great apartment there at a low price. Corey then disappeared, revealing he was a ghost. Quickly, Yusi went to Meta's office, where Meta, a friendly older man, welcomed him warmly. He offered Yusi a place called Kotobuki Manor for only 25,000 yen. Even though Meta said there was a ghost in Kotobuki Manor, Yusi agreed because he had no other options. The next day, Meta took Yusi to his new home, Kotobuki Manor. When Yusi entered, he was amazed to find his room full of books by the famous Isiki Reimei. Even more surprising, Isiki himself appeared saying he had lived in Kotobuki Manor for 10 years. Soon after, a cheerful girl named Akane Kuga arrived and welcomed Yusi to their new home. Akane was his second-year student at Narasi High School and lived independently like Yusi. As night fell, Yusi had dinner with Isiki and Akane, but then many other people joined them in the dining room. Yusi was confused, so he asked Akane about it. She explained that many of them were their neighbors and Kotobuki Manor, was like a community gathering place. Remembering Maida's warning about the haunting, Yusi wondered about the strange things happening in Kotobuki Manor. His curiosity grew when he heard the faint sound of Mahjong coming from somewhere in the building. When he investigated, he found strange creatures like a horned being, a ghostly child, and a dog watching TV. Besides the ghostly neighbors, Isiki appeared again and invited Yusi to join him in the apartment's fancy hot spring bath. While soaking, Yusi brought up the strange things happening in Kotobuki Manor. Isiki then explained that besides humans, spirits also live there as tenants. Trying to understand this, the ghostly owner of Kotobuki Manor showed up, which overwhelmed Yusi so much that he fainted. When he woke up the next day, Yusi thought it was just a dream. But then he encountered a talking bird and saw Isiki doing yard work, which reminded him that Kotobuki Manor was indeed haunted. Also, Akane returned and easily got rid of a bad ghost, revealing that she was not only a high school student but also an exorcist. With this new understanding, Yusi decided to accept life at Kotobuki Manor, ghosts and all, as a step towards becoming truly independent. As time went by, Yusi began having breakfast with the ghostly residents of the apartment. It might seem strange, but most of them were spirits and ghosts. Surprisingly, the boy and his loyal dog, Cory, magically appeared again. Then things got even more unusual when Yusi, a human, broke the supposed rule of not interacting with spirits. He bravely decided to pat Kori's head, challenging the norm. Soon after, Akane shared the secrets of Kotobuki Manor with Yusi. Amazingly, the apartment was protected by a special barrier that allowed the souls of the departed to exist peacefully. Because of this barrier, humans like Yusi could see and talk to ghosts. Also, there was a hidden pathway in the apartment that connected to other dimensions, creating strange and contradictory spaces. Driven by curiosity, Isiki asked Yusi if he would go back to his uncle's house after knowing that the apartment was haunted. Yusi then chose to stay for six months until the dormitory at Judo Business High School was fixed. When Isiki and Akane heard Yusi's decision, they were thrilled and shared a happy moment, celebrating Yusi's determination. To mark Yusi's choice, Akane gave him a cake made by the talented ghost chef, Ruriko. Despite being made by a ghost, the cake amazed Yusi with its delicious taste. However, Ruriko seemed shy and uneasy when Yusi praised her, showing the mysterious nature of the ghostly residence in Kotobuki Manor. After enjoying the delicious cake, Yusi started his first day of high school, eager to begin this new chapter in his life. To his delight, he met a classmate named Takenaha, who offered words of encouragement, understanding the importance of the moment. Upon returning to Kotobuki Manor, Yusi sensed an unexpected presence, invisible but intriguing. Isiki explained that it was Hanako, a ghost residing in the apartment's foyer. Though invisible, Hanako followed ghostly customs by greeting and saying goodbye to the residents. 
During a conversation with Isiki, a human named Akira Fukasi arrived, accompanied by his dog, Seagard. Akira is a painter and also another resident of Kotobuki Manor. Later, Katoya, a collector of ancient items, joined them, adding to the apartment's diverse cast of residents. At a dinner gathering, Yusi was captivated by Mariko, a stunningly beautiful female spirit. Shortly after, another resident named Ryu appeared. With psychic abilities, Ryu commanded respect from both spirits and humans. Isiki introduced Ryu to Yusi, initiating a friendship that bridged the gap between the living and the ghostly realms. The next day, Yusi had a feeling that something bad might happen to his friend, Tashiro Takako. His feeling was right when Tashiro got hit by a fast motorcycle, hurting her leg. Yusi hurried to help her, but he felt a scary energy around him. Akane then came quickly and got rid of the bad spirit, saving Yusi. Later that night, Akane told Yusi what happened. It turned out that Tashiro survived, because Yusi unknowingly helped her. Somehow his spirit mixed with hers and healed her in a special way. This surprising news showed that Yusi had hidden superpowers. Afterward, Yusi went to see Tashiro in the hospital. She shared her experience of seeing him and feeling him ease her pain when she passed out. She then thanked him, believing that he saved her life. As time went on, Yusi happily settled into life at Kotobuki Manor. Ruriko made him delicious lunchboxes, which made him really happy and confirmed his belief that spirits and humans can live together peacefully. Immersed in his new routine, Yusi decided to write a letter to his best friend, Mizuki Hase, sharing his exciting experiences and mentioning his part-time job at a shipping company. One day, while hanging out at the park, Yusi met Takenaka, who really wanted to visit Yusi's apartment. But Yusi refused because he knew there were ghosts living there. Instead, he went home to relax on the terrace with Isiki. Surprisingly, they were joined by Akune Gumi, a spirit who looked like a wolf. Akune turned out to be like a mother to Kori and his dog friend, Siro, taking care of them just like a real mom. Later, Akune told them Kori's sad story, when his own mother abandoned him, leaving him without a mother's love. Kori found comfort in Siro, a stray dog, and they became best friends. When Kori's mom tried to hurt Kori, Siro tried to protect him but ended up getting hurt too. Even after they died, they were haunted by Kori's mom's angry spirit. Siro then took Kori to Ogami, the great god of dogs, where they met Akune, who understood their pain. Worried for their safety, Akune asked for help from the people at Kotobuki Manor to keep Kori and Siro safe. As night fell, Kori's mom tried to get into Kotobuki Manor but couldn't because of a strong seal blocking her way. Acting quickly, Akune used her strong powers to get rid of Kori's mom's spirit, keeping everyone safe. She then asked Isiki and Yusi to take care of Kori and Siro, making sure they were safe and supported. At the same time, Katoya gave Yusi a special charm to help him sleep well. Watching Kori and Siro sleep peacefully, Yusi thought about how much he missed his own parents and best friend Hayes. He had a dream where he was with them, feeling warm and loved. As time went on, Takenaka and his friends unexpectedly showed up, wanting to cause trouble for Yusi. Even though Yusi tried to stop them, they wouldn't listen, and things got chaotic in the courtyard of Kotobuki Manor. Isiki and Akira stepped in to defend Yusi, making Takenaka and his friends leave. Finally, it was time for Yusi to leave Kotobuki Manor and start a new chapter in the dormitory. The apartment residents threw a big goodbye party for him and Yusi got a pendant from Katoya as a gift. Then, Akane said a prayer to protect Yusi with the pendant. Feeling sad but also excited, Yusi said goodbye to the ghost-filled place of Kotobuki Manor. At the start of September, Yusi began his time in the dormitory, sharing a room with fellow students Isi and Kaga. Having breakfast with Isi at the cafeteria, Yusi noticed how different it was from Moriko's cooking and felt uneasy, reminded of his uncle's place. In the following days, when Takenaka was arrested by the police for doing bad things, Yusi felt guilty and confused. Even though he had stuff to do, he wanted to go back to Kotobuki Manor, but it was empty when he got there. At school, things felt weird, and Yusi wished he could see the ghost friends from Kotobuki Manor again, but couldn't. After school, he asked Kaga to eat with him, but Kaga refused, making Yusi feel even more uncomfortable at the dormitory. As time passed, Yusi felt more and more upset and wanted to go back to Kotobuki Manor. He met Sato, a ghost who also worked in the human world, and Sato could tell Yusi was worried. Sato then invited Yusi for a meal and gave him advice about accepting change and looking forward to the future. 
Meaning to talk to his best friend, Hayes, about what was going on, they met up at Cozy Cafe and had a deep conversation about what they were going through. It was a good chance for them to open up to each other. The next day, while hanging around the dormitory, Yusi unexpectedly met his cousin, Eriko, who apologized sincerely for her past actions. This made Yusi think more about who he was, and he decided firmly that he would go back to Kotobuki Manor, ready to understand and use his spiritual powers. When Yusi returned to the apartment, everyone welcomed him warmly, making it feel like a family reunion. They also met a new human resident named Furuhonia, who talked about his travels in Africa and the Middle East, looking for a mysterious spellbook called the Black Mary. Furuhonia then proudly showed Yusi and Akane his collection of famous magic books. But one book seemed different, making Akane curious. Furuhonia said he got it as a bonus from a seller in the marketplace. When Akane looked at the book, she saw strange writing, maybe in an ancient language. She thought the book was sealed, hiding powerful magic inside its pages. Although the book had great potential, its powerful magic was locked away because it was sealed. But Furuhania wasn't discouraged. He thought about selling it to collectors for a lot of money. Akane then suggested they ask her master and carefully study the book before selling it. One night, while Yusi was sleeping, he was surprised to see a mysterious sealed book appear, along with a bird spirit named Fool. Fool said he was there to guide Yusi and announced that Yusi was his master. He showed Yusi the Hirozo icon, a famous book that could summon and control creatures from another dimension. Feeling empowered by this new knowledge, Yusi tested the Hirozo icon by summoning different creatures from its pages. The next day, while meeting Hayes at a cafe, they got into a dangerous situation with some scary people. They ran into an old building for safety, where Yusi was amazed to see Fool again, proving their earlier encounter was real. At that moment, Hayes could see Fool too, which was surprising. With danger coming closer, Yusi used the Hirozo icon to summon spirits for protection. But the spirits couldn't stop the bad guys, so Yusi had to use elemental magic to slow them down for a bit. After a short fight where Hayes stopped one attacker, Fool came back and scared the other attackers got until fainted. Later, Hayes refused to Yusi's invitation to visit Kotobuki Manor, saying honesty was important in their friendship. Back at the apartment, Yusi found Akane upset because the magic book had disappeared. Surprisingly, Yusi had the book and said it chose him as its master, shocking everyone. Furuhane was touched and gave the book to Yusi as a gift, making their friendship stronger. The next day, Yusi talked seriously with Akane about improving his spiritual powers. She said if he got stronger, he could summon more spirits from the magic book. At the same time, Egg said he'd visit the apartment soon. When Hayes came to Kotobuki Manor, he brought gifts for everyone to thank them for taking care of Yusi. Humans and spirits were happy to see Hayes, showing how much they liked him. Yusi then took the chance to talk to Hayes, sharing all the amazing experiences he had in the Kotobuki Manor. Hayes listened carefully and was happy to feel their friendship was back. But things got tense when Furuhania showed up with a mysterious suitcase containing a mummified head artifact. Quickly, Furuhania used his magic to get rid of the scary vibe from the artifact. They learned that Furuhania was really good at magic like Yusi, but even better, making him the ultimate bookmaster. The next day, after a nice time at the Kotobuki Manor, Hayes said goodbye and left. Yusi stayed to keep learning with Akane about summoning spirits. Time passed quickly, and Yusi started his second year at school. They got a new English teacher named Miyura Katsumasa known for being a great teacher but distant. Watching Miura act strangely with students, Yusi felt upset and thought about talking to him about it. But then spring came, bringing a peaceful break from school with Golden Week. During the break, Yusi met up with Hayes at his place, where they met Ryu, who had just come back from his adventures. They all got introduced and then Matajuro, a giant with one eye, showed up unexpectedly, making everyone happy and celebrating together. When school started again, Yusi heard rumors about ghosts in an old warehouse used by the drama club. While others believed the rumors, Yusi wasn't sure and thought it might be just for attention. Yusi met Fool secretly on the school rooftop to talk about the ghost rumors. With the help of the spirit Norn, Yusi tried to understand what was going on, but the prophecies were confusing, leaving everyone puzzled. At first, Yusi didn't take Norn's predictions seriously, but his curiosity made him want to learn more about the school's ghost stories. With Hasiro, he found strange graffiti in the drama team hall, giving them an eerie feeling. 
Suddenly, Miura appeared and asked what they were doing. To their surprise, the graffiti started emitting black smoke, trapping Miura and turning him into a threat. Yusi then protected Tasiro, but Miura vanished mysteriously. While Tasiro looked into Miura's background, Yusi went to meet Norn on the school rooftop to try to understand what was happening. After talking with Norn, Yusi learned that the evil spirit in Miura had disappeared. Wanting more answers, he summoned Chakma, who said the graffiti might be a portal to the demon world. Chakma told a scary story about an old castle in a room where a king did something horrible to his wife and her lover. Later, Yusi saw Miura at the hospital, worried about how tired he looked even though it hadn't been long since the possession. Determined to find out the truth, Yusi wanted to understand the connection between the ghostly figure and the graffiti. Tasiro told him about Miura's past at girls' special high school and why he left after drama club problems. When Yusi took Tasiro home, Miura attacked them, leading to a dangerous fight. Using spells from his magic book, Yusi stopped Miura and Tasiro from getting hurt. Instead of calling the police, Yusi came up with a plan involving a fake gas explosion to hide what really happened. After going back to his apartment, Yusi told Akane all about the crazy things that had happened recently. The next day, when he went to see Miura at the hospital, Tasiro urgently called him to the rooftop. At the same time, Miura tricked Yusi into getting a flower vase, setting up a fight with Tasiro. But things changed when the evil spirit in Miura ended up inside Tasiro instead, thanks to Akane's help. After a break, Yusi went back to school and got a mysterious message telling him to go to the art room. Without knowing, Miura attacked again, but Yusi used a powerful spell to stop him. Summer vacation came, but Yusi kept training hard with Akane. They pushed themselves more, learning tougher spells. Even though it was tough and made him tired, Yusi kept going, showing how dedicated he was. And all his hard work paid off when Ryu gave him a special spell called Spirit Vision, which let him see things in a whole new way. While Hayes was away in Austria, he came back to visit Yusi at the ghost apartment, bringing gifts for everyone. There was excitement when Katoya showed a necklace made from a unicorn horn, with Hayes and Katoya started bidding for it. In the end, Hayes won, getting the horn and a special photo of Katoya with the unicorn. Even though Yusi hoped for a break, Akane surprised him with more training, was standing under a waterfall in the apartment's bathroom. Yusi faced the challenge bravely, not giving in to the strong water. As summer vacation ended, Tasiro told Yusi that their homeroom teacher, Hayasaka, was in the hospital. Yusi went back to school and found out there were two new teachers introduced by the principal, now Michiako and Harukadaoki. The students liked them a lot and felt their positive energy. During an English club meeting, Yusi met a new member, Kanatsu Yamamoto, who disagreed with the group's idea of showing anime at an event and wanted to do a regular movie instead. When Yamamoto suggested a play by Truffaut, everyone was confused until Yusi explained that Truffaut was a famous French film director. After that, Yamamoto stopped coming to the club. After that, Yusi spent three days working to help pay the apartment rent. He met two new co-workers, Sasaki and Kawasima, who were assigned by their boss, Takanosi. Even though they were shy, Yusi tried to help them with their tasks. On their way home, their supervisor, Heiji Mei, told them they couldn't take a day off because they had to handle 300 packages quickly. The next day, Takanosi organized them into teams to get the work done faster. But there was a problem when Hajime said Sasaki and Kawasima had damaged something by putting it in the wrong place in the vehicle. Takadosi took the blame and apologized to Hajime, who wasn't too upset about the small mistake. After that, Takadosi talked to Sasaki and Kawasima, telling them it's important to learn from mistakes to avoid making them again. Even though they felt bad during work, Yusi tried to cheer them up with kind words. Later, Sasaki and Kawasima thanked Takata C for his advice and apologized to Heijime. On another day, while Yusi was walking home from school, he felt like something bad was going to happen. He met a sad girl named Yumi, who was thinking about hurting herself. Yusi talked to her and stopped her from doing anything drastic, and Fool appeared to give her wise advice, making her feel better. When Yusi got back to the apartment, he got a call from the police station where Yumi thanked him for helping her. During their talk, Yumi shared her problems with fitting in with her friends and having issues with her family, showing her vulnerabilities. Seeing that Yumi needed a friend, Yusi supported her, and they became friends. Later on, Yumi tried to join Yusi's group of friends and went to a party organized by the English club. 
They met George, the club leader, and Yusi, helped Yumi understand how to behave in social situations. They had a good time at the party, which boosted Yumi's mood. After a meet with her troublesome friends, Yumi said sorry to Yusi for their behavior and thanked him for being a positive influence. As the school's cultural festival got closer, Yusi's homeroom teacher, Chiaki, asked the class committee for ideas. Even though Chiaki seemed laid back, he cared a lot about his students, especially those who needed help. After some discussion, they decided on a theme for their contribution was a game about fighting demons. At the same time, Yusi and Tassiro went to an English club meeting to plan their part in the festival. But they couldn't make much progress because Yamamoto didn't show up after a previous problem. They didn't force her to come back and instead try to understand more about her by looking up information online. They found out that Yamamoto was really smart but had family issues, which might explain why she was struggling. The next day, Yusi talked to Chiaki about Yamamoto. Chiaki suggested giving Yamamoto some time because things might not change right away, no matter what Yusi did. Later, Yusi saw Yamamoto at the library and tried to talk to her about the English club's plans for the cultural festival. But Yamamoto didn't want to talk and warned Yusi to stay away from her. At the English club meeting, they decided to do an English play for the festival. When Yamamoto showed up, she had her own idea, but it was too late because they had already picked a program. She got upset and tore up her proposal. Later that evening at Kotobuki Manor, they were having coffee when Kaudoya showed them a 3D magic projector. Even though Akane put up a barrier, someone still managed to break in, causing chaos. Yusi tried to fight them off with lightning, but it didn't work. Eventually, Kaudoya confronted the intruder, who turned out to be from Congresso Vidator, a group looking for miracles. After that, Yusi met Hayes and Tasiro at a cafe to study. Tasiro joked about Yusi and Hayes being a couple, but Yusi clarified things. When he got back to the apartment, Yusi met Furuhonya, who gave him a special potion called Enrita that could make someone immortal, but there was only a little bit left. On the first day of exams, Yusi found the questions really hard, even though he studied a lot. After the exam, Chiaki caught a student, Nisiyama, cheating the phone. Chiaki then talked to the class later, saying there would be a meeting to talk about cheating during the exams. He was disappointed that students didn't listen about not bringing phones to school and said it was a serious problem. After the cheating incident, Chiaki decided to take strict actions, like taking away and breaking any cell phones found with students. Even though Aoki tried to talk to Chiaki and consider how the students felt, Chiaki stayed firm in his decision to teach them a lesson. This caused tension in the auditorium, with students demanding Chiaki apologize for what he did. In a crucial moment, Yusi stepped in by sending his spirit bird, fool, to calm things down. Then Kamiya, the student council president, got involved and asked Chiaki and Aoki to stay calm and apologize to the students. Kamiya also asked if students could bring cell phones to school under certain conditions, which Chiaki agreed to, but he warned there would be consequences if they broke the rules. They negotiated and finally agreed that confiscated phones would be given back after a month, but with strict rules about using them. Even though some students were still upset with Chiaki, they agreed to the terms and thanked Kamiya and Chiaki for finding a solution. Meanwhile, they were getting ready for the cultural festival, and Yusi and his classmates were busy planning their performances. Kamiya asked them to help arrange something to thank Chiaki. Knowing Tasiro was good at finding things out, Kamiya asked her to gather information about Chiaki. On the other hand, Yamamoto started feeling left out from the festival preparations and school activities which made her decide to leave school. When Yusi met Chiaki on the rooftop, he noticed something strange around Chiaki's chest, which he absorbed, making Chiaki feel better from what seemed like anemia, but causing Yusi to faint. When he woke up, Akane warned Yusi about the dangers of his powers. Later during an English club rehearsal, Yamamoto interrupted and confronted Yagai, leading Tashiro to reveal Yusi's personal struggles. Yamamoto's reaction worried Yusi, but Aoki stepped in and helped Yamamoto express her worries. In the following days, Yusi spent more time on school responsibilities. While doing so, he sensed something bad was about to happen. He caught a girl leaving the teacher's room, only to find Chiaki injured. Determined to find the culprit, Yusi followed the girl, who eventually admitted to hurting Chiaki because of his treatment of Aoki during a public event. Understanding her reasons, Yusi decided not to punish her. As Chiaki's help got worse, Yusi looked for a solution and asked Jean for help, 
who gave him a vial of special water called Eternity Water. Yusi gave Chiaki a drop of this water, hoping it would help him get better, which miraculously, Chiaki recovered completely. After Chiaki got better, Yusi asked who else wanted to try the special water, and Tassiro volunteered. They took a photo to remember the moment. Not long after, the cultural festival finally came and everyone was excited about it. The residents of Kotobuki Manor, along with spirits and ghosts, took part enthusiastically, adding to the fun. At the end of the festival, there was a sudden power cut during the closing ceremony, causing chaos. But with the help of the magical abilities of the Kotobuki Manor residents, Yusi managed to restore the electricity. Chiaki's amazing musical performance, planned by Kamiya, earned him a lot of praise from everyone, making him even more popular among students. During the festive season, including Christmas and New Year, Yusi focused on work to improve his finances. Even though he couldn't join Eriko's invitation to spend the holidays at his uncle's house due to work commitments, he found joy in chance meetings with Yumi, George, and Eriko. As New Year's Eve neared, Yusi celebrated with Hayes and friends at the Kotobuki Manor apartment, enjoying the festivities. After the celebration, they stumbled upon a secret cave passage that led to a snow hut, acting as a portal to different time dimensions. Despite the unexpected adventure, Yusi's powers helped them safely return to reality. And so, the anime comes to an end. Moral lesson from the story, if a talking bird hands you a magical book, make sure it doesn't suddenly disappear, or you might end up summoning spirits at a cafe instead of studying for exams.